This video is brought to you by Paperlike. The original iPad knew exactly what it was, and that clarity made it powerful. Today the iPad tries to be everything, and in doing so it's become something else entirely. Not quite enough. That was my conclusion in the iPad docu story I released right before WWDC. But now, just a few months later, it's obvious that something feels different. For the first time in a very long time, things are shifting. With iPad OS 26 and Apple's latest chips, the iPad is no longer just another fast iPad. It's more capable, more layered, more computer. But is that actually a good thing? Is the iPad finally becoming what we always wanted it to be? Or has it just gotten really good at pretending? You see, this jump in iPad OS versions wasn't just for the reason of uniformity across all Apple devices. It is in fact made possible thanks to the overkill of a processor we've all been ranting about in recent years, specifically the ones in the iPad. As Apple's liquid glass interface represents a new era in visual design with soft translucency, real-time blur and dynamic lighting that feels alive and immersive, behind the elegance lies immense computational complexity. Achieving this glass look isn't just a cosmetic touch, it requires continuously processing every pixel on the screen through Gaussian blur, compositing layers, and adapting to light, motion, and user interaction in real time. Just a few years ago, this level of fluid responsiveness would have drained batteries and overwhelmed CPUs. Enter Apple Silicon, the M series of chip that provide the raw horsepower and efficiency necessary for such a UI to even exist. This tight integration between hardware and software lets Apple apply complex graphical effects without lag or drain, ensuring the UI stays buttery smooth. Not only that, but Apple has finally sped things up and now everything feels as if I'm using twice as powerful of a device. Super quick transitions, motion animation and natural bouncy behaviors that look familiar yet way different than anything we've seen so far. So yeah, Apple didn't just redesign the interface, it waited until the hardware could make the vision real. But this wouldn't mean much if the tools weren't there to take advantage of it all, as it was the case with all iPads of yesteryear. Upon installing iPad OS 26, the first thing I noticed was the cursor as my iPad was already docked with a magic keyboard. Not only it's pointy and accurate, but more importantly, gone is that floating circle cursor that felt more like a party trick than a precision tool. This new one finally behaves very much like the cursor on a regular computer. No more weird and annoying snapping, just fast, accurate and intentional points and clicks. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Same goes for the windowed experience and how natural it all feels. The grab handle on the bottom right of every window, even full-sized ones, is so right that I'm not sure how it never came to be before. No more ridiculous snapping grid system and complete freedom of moving around windows. The annoying three dot menu that used to float in the middle of windows, it's gone. Now it morphs into the familiar traffic light buttons, just like on a Mac. Sure, unlike on a Mac, when minimizing, things go back to their normal app placement since there's no Mac dock per se, but everything else makes perfect sense. And if I'm not using my keyboard, tapping on the dots with my fingers is just as intuitive as they grow and allow you to easily tap them. And don't get me started on the file menu up top which shows up even when apps are full screen. Or if let's say I'm using the iPad as is, vertically. Things are so Mac-like when it comes to window behavior that I can even have a full screen app and a window app on top of it, which at this point can be considered a mix between a Mac in Windows. Of course, if you've seen my iPad story episode, you'll know how excited I am to now have a much better file management system as well in the form of the updated files app. Aside from the customizable list view that provides resizable columns and collapsible folders, there's also now folders in the dock and perhaps most importantly, background tasks. Furthermore, there is the games app, which might be the best way to remind yourself 
what games you've purchased over the years and also the dedicated preview app which is ideal for opening editing and marking up pdfs and images with the apple pencil talking about the apple pencil if you've ever written or drawn on an ipad and something just felt off it's the glass experience paper like 2.1 fixes that as it's a screen protector built for those who actually use their ipads writing sketching or planning what sets it apart is the nano dot technology tiny micro beads that create just the right amount of resistance so every stroke feels more controlled not too sleek not too rough just that subtle tactile feedback that makes digital feel more physical it's soft enough to reduce wear on the apple pencil tip and thin enough to preserve the sharpness and brightness of the ipad screen unlike typical matte protectors this one cuts glare without dulling the display and it's one of the few that actually meets apple's design guidelines so pencil responsiveness stays perfect it also helps protect against scuffs scratches and fingerprints and it comes with a full install kit and step-by-step -step instructions for a bubble-free application whether you're a note taker a creative or somewhere in between paperlike makes the ipad feel less like a slab of glass and more like a canvas so check it out below now here's the part Apple didn't exactly highlight in the keynote. The new window management system called Windowed Apps feels like a quiet evolution of Stage Manager, more precisely a complete alternative to it. You now have three choices. Traditional full screen apps, which still makes most sense on something like the iPad mini. Stage Manager, which in my opinion has overstayed its welcome. And then Windowed Apps, the one that actually makes sense. It's simple. I open two apps and if I want a third, I just swipe up to reveal the home screen or grab it straight from the dock. App groupings stay intact when I pull up all open windows. And for the first time, the iPad feels more than just a laptop like. It feels smarter than a laptop in some ways. Case in point, flicking an app to the left or right edge instantly prepares a split view. No dragging, no guessing, just clean, intuitive multitasking that feels so cool. And yes, the new red X or close button actually quits the active app, as in gone. Not pushed to the background, not silently frozen, just closed. Which means I can finally keep track of what's running while working without scrolling through a graveyard of ghost apps. Sure. Apple could have added a close all apps button or the ability to bulk select and close, but hey, this is already a huge progress and I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining because unlike Windows, which is great on a device like the Surface Pro only to become a lot worse once the keyboard is detached, iPad OS 26 remains equally good in both full touch experience and laptop such. There but a magic keyboard or really any third-party one, the iPad now behaves eerily close to a Mac. Command plus H hides your current workspace or more accurately slides it off the screen to reveal the desktop. Command plus M minimizes the active window right back to where it came from. Command plus space launches spotlight. It's all instantly familiar. The shortcuts, the gestures, the muscle memory, it's there. Well, almost. The escape key still feels a bit lonely but for the first time the ipad isn't pretending to be mac os it's boring just enough to feel powerful without sacrificing its own dna that said not everything is smooth sailing with full-size apps and windowed versions floating around things can get messy especially when i'm swiping between spaces and juggling alt tab what the ipad still doesn't have is a proper concept of desktops distinct workspaces that help contain the chaos because once you've got six or seven active windows flying around it's easy to forget what's open and where unfortunately once the honeymoon period fades small cracks start to appear every once in a while things you don't notice at first edge cases inconsistencies start creeping in as you really live with ipad os 26. one of the simplest examples the weird overlap of ui elements in some apps even native ones like files you'll see a new traffic light buttons on the site and right next to them, a second triple dot menu. Both live in the same space, doing different things, and it just feels off, like two design languages layered on top of each other. Things get even more confusing once you plug in the iPad to an external monitor. Take the Files app again, for example. On the iPad screen, I can drag and drop a file just fine. But try that exact same moving action on the larger display and nothing happens it simply doesn't work sure it could be fixed with a future software update but that's not the real issue the real issue is that clamshell mode is still not present the ipad has to stay open front and center while the monitor is treated like a passive sidekick it can hold windows yes but that's all it can do there's no desktop to interact with no sense of place now, something that i was really hoping for 
is support for games when it comes to external monitor and the ability to make them full screen which unfortunately is still not the case they pretty much keep the same shape and form of the iPad itself and expand pretty much to this so not ideal and even performance wise things fall short the 4k monitor that I'm using runs at 160 Hz but the iPad caps it at 60 and before anyone says hardware limitation this exact same M4 chip powers the base Mac mini which drives the full 160 Hz without breaking a sweat here's another one still after all those years while plugged into a monitor if I click the battery icon on the top right corner of the external display control center pops up on the iPad itself leaving the external display completely frozen until I physically tap or click away from the iPad. It breaks the illusion. And we're still missing basic system level phone support. I have to rely on third party apps just to get proper typography control. Something that macOS has offered proudly for over, I don't know how many decades. So clearly there's still a lot to be desired, but I can be objective. I can appreciate the effort and the direction. Sure, the desktop is still just a placeholder, it's not a true space, but in this new desktop-like mode, I do get access to all my peripherals. The dock works, which means I can offload footage from the SD card and do other work while monitoring the progress. The external speakers show up too, letting me control them and their volume separately. It's a solid foundation, you know, this is the most capable version of the iPad we've ever had. Yes, there are still caps, still limitations, but for once, those limitations don't feel like they come at the user's expense. More than ever, the iPad feels like the most complete, not a computer out there. More than ever, it flexes and quietly shows other two-in-ones what could be possible in the near future. And now that I've tasted it, more than ever, I want to be served the full Michelin course version of what the iPad could become soon. Now, if you want to see another version of a two-in-one that is dubbed the most powerful tablet in the world, you can check out my favorite tech and accessories episode right here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.